um, they they were not available to do something. Like they had the free time, but but they just couldn't come out to do something with the family. And, and their excuse was, I, I, I don't have any more spoons. And I was like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what, is, what does that have to do with, with anything? Uh, in, in, in later, I learned that's actually a real thing. <laughs> Here I am today. And we're doing this, and and uh, and like I said, I, I I delayed because I had allergies, which is kind of like being sick, uh, which is a coincidence because my topic for this month for April is international mental health awareness, and so that's what we're gonna do every week. I'm gonna be talking about um, uh, issues and concerns and stories of mental health and how and tools for dealing with mental health. Uh, and then looking for games that do the same thing, games where you get to explore mental health and in the feelings of mental health and grappling and, and dealing with those issues uh, or or as just as an escape, as a healthy, positive way to to uh, get a, get away from worrying about that, those sort of things, uh, and which is also OK. It is absolutely OK to want to escape your, you know, the the. Um, the pain and the frustration and the annoying things that come along with with mental health problems and conflicts and concerns and issues, uh, all of which are all related. And that is uh, really what we're going to be about. Um, don't worry, it's not going to be like super heavy. Uh, it's just uh, I, I want this to be a, a, a good look, an honest look at mental health this month. So I'm going to start this week with um, a story, uh, you know, just a personal story, an anecdote. That's what an anecdote means. It's a personal story. As an example, uh, my nieces, uh, they, they live near me and uh, they're, they're young. Uh, they're, they're still learning they're, they're, uh, about the world around them, the adult world. And, uh, and one, one day um, they, they were not available to do something like they had the free time. But but they just couldn't come out to do something with the family, and and their excuse was I I I don't have any more spoons. And I was like, what what does that mean? <laughs> what what does what does that have to do with, it, with anything? Uh, in 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 later I learned that's actually a real thing. That's a real thing to have no more no more spoons. Um, you have the time, uh, you have the physical energy, uh, there's nothing getting in the way of you from doing something, but you just can't do it. And there's no easy way to explain why you can't do it, except to just say, I don't have any more spoons. And, and really, this is the idea. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. You know what a spoon is, right? It, it's it's a thing you use to eat ice cream and, or soup, and and uh, yeah, imagine you you have guests over to your house, and in your kitchen you have a cutlery drawer, a silverware drawer. Silverware is your knife, your fork, your spoons, uh, your chopsticks or kwaize or ohashi, depending on your language, and uh, and and this and everyone has a limited number of these things, and so if you have too many guests. If there's a lot of guests in your house, you're going to not have enough of those things. You're going to run out of knives and forks and spoons. Eventually, you're going to have guests that you can't, you can't give any more. <laughs> there's no more. You'll have to find you know, plastic ones or, or something or eat with your hands. Uh, or another example is um, you, have, you have clean silverware um, in your drawer. That's fine. Again, but it's limited. Uh, nobody has an unlimited uh, supply of silverware. Uh, you, you just, you just have a few of each, right? And, and you come home, it's late at night and you're tired and you don't want to have to cook anything. So you just want to have me, you know, make some soup or have some ice cream after work. I know sometimes I do. I just, I want to get some ice cream and, uh, you, you get some ice cream. And, uh, so, you're reaching and you've got a spoon. I need some ice cream. 
and then you, you put it in the dishwasher when you're done. And then the next night you come home and the same thing, oh, you're tired, too tired to, to cook or anything. Make, make some soup. Yeah, make some soup. And you, and you take out a clean spoon and you have some soup. And then the next night, the same thing happens. And eventually you reach into the silverware drawer and, you, and you're like, oh, I'd really like some ice cream tonight because I'm really tired. And you reach in and there's no more, there's no more spoons. We're out of clean spoons. And that means, okay, to get more clean spoons, now you have to put the ice cream back in the freezer and you have to put soap in the dishwasher, or close the dishwasher, start the dishwasher, and then you have to wait for the dishwasher to do its thing. It takes time for it to wash. Uh, and then you gotta wait for it to finish. And then when it's finished, you gotta wait for it to cool because if you open the dishwasher right when it's finished, everything's too hot and wet, you know, it's steamy. You gotta wait for it to cool. And then by then, you know, it's too late. You're already asleep. And that's just kind of a mental image. Those are all examples pointing to the same feeling. You just have to have anything left. Yeah, it turns out that spoon theory is a legitimate thing in the, I'm not going to read the whole article with you because there's a ton of articles. I just found one that, that does a, a good example of explaining the, the spoon theory. And it really boils down to people with um, uh, mobility issues or very debilitating uh, uh, chronic illnesses. But it also applies to people's mental health. And, and actually, it, it applies across the board. Everyone has a, a, a battery inside them. Uh, I don't know if it's mental or emotional or spiritual. It's just a battery. You, you got a battery in you. And, and when you wake up in the morning, your battery is full. And most of us, we push through our day and the battery goes down depending on the work that we do, uh, how our day is, how busy was our day. And during the day, sometimes we do things that can recharge that battery. And, and at the end of the day, at nighttime, when we're at home and relaxing, our battery will not be 100%. But it won't be empty. It won't be. It, it might be 50%. It might be 75%. Because during the day, you hopefully will have taken breaks and had some food and taken a walk, maybe did some exercise, uh, hydrate, which reminds me, tea. I'm drinking spiced chai tea. Mm -mm -mm. Um, generally, it goes to sleep with a mostly full battery inside them. But there are people who just, they wake up in the morning and they have a full battery. But because of some limitation or restricting factor to them, mental or emotional or physical, they know that when they do something, it takes a lot more energy than it does most other people. So I, I take getting out of my bed and going and taking a shower and putting on clean clothes, brushing my teeth for granted. But there are a lot of people who getting out of bed is a physical difficulty. It takes energy to get out of bed because of some physical limit to them. In taking a shower is not an easy thing to do. Um, taking a shower uh, is a very complicated process for some people with a physical limitation or physical restriction. Um, they can't take a shower, they do take showers, but for them to take a shower would be exhausting for most people. 
to, to be able to do what they do, they would drain you and just leave you like, like you just went to the gym, you know? And that's exactly how they feel too. That's exactly how they feel. They're no different. It's exhausting for them. So by the time they get up, shower, put on clean clothes, brush their teeth, and take their mobility assistance or their walker or their wheelchair and get outside and go to work, they have spent many hours in the gym. They're, they're exhausted by the time they go. They're tired. They're tired. And by the time they finish work, they are more tired than most other people would be. Because imagine getting up in the morning, doing your normal routine, going to work or school, uh, going to get lunch, something as simple as taking a break and getting tea or coffee, and then getting lunch, and then going home, and then making dinner, is the same as spending all day in the gym, and you have no choice. You want to do something? You have to do 50 push-ups to do the thing. But I just want to do the thing. Well, do the thing. But do 50, pu do 50 push-ups first. What? And that's for, that is exactly what it's like for a lot of people. They're exhausted by the time they, they do something as simple as brushing their teeth. But yet, they still do it. And that leaves us with the idea that for a lot of people, when they get up in the morning, they have to plan their day because they have to conserve the energy in their battery. And the closest mental image they can use to convey to someone is, when they wake up in the morning, they have a limited number of spoons. And the moment they get up and take a shower and put on clothes, they've lost one spoon. They haven't even left the house yet, and one spoon is gone. And sometimes, by the end of the day, there's no more spoons left. They don't want to socialize. They don't want to do anything with their friends. In fact, they just want to go home after work because there's just nothing. There's no more. Their battery's empty. They just want to go to bed. That, that's it. No more spoons left. And that's the idea of spoon theory. And why, how does this apply to mental health? Well, it's the same exact same thing you might not see it that's that's the cruelty of the thing with mental health restrictions and limitations you don't see it you see someone who looks perfectly fine you might see someone who looks very fit very healthy very attractive young they have a lot of energy it they glow but how can they, you know, you say, hey, after work or after school, let's go get some coffee. They say, no, nah, I'm sorry, I'm really tired. Like, excuse you? And honestly, that's a fair answer. They just don't have any spoons left. They burned through all of their spoons. It happens.